of here. So, hello, I am Saud Alam from Old Dominion University. And I am presenting a way to improve the accessibility of archived uh, uh, dictionary images that are stored in um, various archives. <coughs> and the story begins with uh, this thing which is called Charpai. I visited India a few years ago. And so this is a, a, a made of wood and rope. And so basically I was laying down on this. And I was reading a book. And I encountered a term that I had no idea what it is. So I picked up a dictionary and tried to find out like what's, what's the definition or meaning of that term. And it turns out that, that the word didn't, didn't exist in that dictionary. So I asked an old man, do you know what this term means? And he said, yeah, sure, why not? Right here, this thing, these threads that are used to to adjust the tension of the web, um, that's the term that you are asking me about. I was really, I was, the thing was underneath me literally and I, I didn't know about it. So when I came back uh, uh, from the village to the city and, and I, had access to better things, and I asked this, like, hey, what's a dictionary? Basically, I took out my phone and asked, like, okay, Google, uh, define dictionary. And this is the definition that Google gave me. So there are a few terms. It says it's a book, and then optionally, an electronic resource that lists the word of a language. And then bracket, they say, typically in alphabetical order. So all these things are uh, uh, important here. <coughs> First thing that I noticed here, it is mentioning something called our electronic resource. So this is something that was added to the definition once we had something called electronics. 100 years ago, 200 years ago, probably there was not, uh, this definition was not the same. But it is a book. So I started realizing what's the difference between a book and a special book called dictionary. So. So here are a few things, like it is read in random access style uh, in contrast with a storybook where it makes more sense if you start from the beginning and go uh, towards the end. In dictionaries, you look forward and you find which page it is on. The only reason why would someone study a dictionary from uh, beginning to the end is to memorize it, I guess. Uh, so, so the access is special, so writing style is also special, how they build dictionaries. Now we have computers, we have other tools that can help us uh, uh, writing dictionaries in uh, effective ways. But back in days when we didn't have dictionary uh, uh, computers in place, what they used to do is like, they used to have these drawers, and there would be letters on each drawer, and they'll be writing definitions on card, and they'll be putting in appropriate uh, uh, drawer, until they reach to a level when they think we have got enough definitions. Let's compile all those cards and publish it in the form of a book. So, <clears throat> so I was still curious to find that the term out, and so I realized like what could be a better place to get an old dictionary. And I looked in an internet archive, and I found they really have some old dictionaries <coughs> available. So. <laughs> This is a, an interface called Book Reader, which is served by Internet Archive. And I went there, and I was surprised, like, while having these scanned pages, they still have a way to search it or read out loud. So I searched for the term book in there. But there are two surprises that I got. There is this day book in the definition. And there are 174 matches found in the entire dictionary. And I was looking for the, the term definition. So there was no way, easy way to actually point out which, which page I want to go. <coughs> so there are two problems. One is it is not allowing us fielded searching. The other one is it is returning 
way too many results in case of common words. So <laughs> Urdu is my uh, mother tongue. And I thought, wow, they are allowing searching in scanned pages. So let's find out if I have any dictionaries uh, available in Urdu. And there were some. So I searched for a term there. And there were two problems. First, the time when I was trying to find this, I didn't have a computer where I can type Urdu. So it was difficult, but I found a web page where I can type Urdu and copy the term and paste it here. And it says no match is found. So I did the traditional way of uh, looking for the term and went to the pages crawling up. And I found like, yeah, the term was there. So, <coughs> so there are some related work, but the most interesting thing is here, Abbey Fine Reader, which is used by an Internet Archive Book Reader to power this uh, um, um, OCR functionality. And on their page, they advertise like they are supporting 190 languages. So I said, Urdu is not one of those uncommon languages. It should be in 190 languages. So I tried to uh, cross compare what languages they support and what are the most popular languages. I took a uh, list of 100 most popular uh, languages based on native speakers uh, and found that 63 of uh, them were missing in, the, in their supported language. So I said, OK, how about top 50? 29 were missing. How about top 10 languages? Four were missing. <coughs> and those who were supported, there was no mention like how well those are supported. So I thought there should be a better way of dealing with this. But before we talk about that, if you go to the um, Google's result that, uh, that it said, it, it, it is uh, an ordered collection, right? So, so sorting or collation is very core to the dictionaries for uh, random access or uh, <coughs> the fast lookup. And uh, there is something called collation, which is defined as an ordered assembly of written information for the sake of finding the information quickly. In case of English, it's easier. Uh, we have these ASCII characters that are in the same order as they appear. Uh, but in, next, in Unicode character set, uh, characters are not always in the same order as they appear in the alphabet. So for example, if you take uh, Arabic script, and there is a difference between Ar Arabic script and Arabic language itself. Uh, so Arabic script reserves Unicode characters from 0600 to 06FF. <laughs> and all the 26 letters from A Arabic language, they appear together in the natural order. But there are other languages that derive the um, uh, Arabic script. And they added more characters to it to write their own language. And the examples are Urdu, Persian, um, um, uh, and there are a handful more. <laughs> So when they add extra characters, um, there is no place left. They cannot insert characters in the middle of already existing Unicode values. So, so they have to place those characters somewhere else. And this causes that uh, the, the letters are now out of order. So we cannot rely on those numbers anymore. Uh, so there is a project from Unicode, which is Common Locale Data Repository, where they actually <coughs> store uh, information and functionalities for, uh, that allow this collation for other languages. <coughs> but, but there are problems. Although they are defining, those definitions can help going forward, like how to sort a list in language X. But the material that was already produced like hundreds of years ago, we cannot go and fix that, because those are imprinted material, right? Uh, and there are things that, that create uh, <coughs> discrepancies. Things like compound letters. So in some languages, more than one letters combine together and form a single phoneme. And that is sometimes considered a single letter. Although those uh, more than one letters that combine together, they appear in alphabet uh, uh, independently. So some dictionaries consider those combined letters as single, and they order their collection that way, and some otherwise. <coughs> and then there are dicritical marks and half letters. So for example, there's a language Hindi. Uh, it has concept of half letter, where two consonants combine together without a vowel in between. And the first consonant is, a sound is like 
half in it. And then there are prefixes. So they create, so for example, in, in uh, many English dictionaries, if you look for something like book, which is a noun, and to book, which is the verb form or infinitive form basically, they both will appear together one after the other. Two books should go under T, but it's not. Uh, because they will be, if, if they do it that way, to book, to go, to find, all those things will um, be like in, in one place. And we don't want that. We want the meaning in, in, in the right place, in the right context. And so, so one way to solve this problem is to take a custom sorting function based on the dictionary and apply for that particular dictionary. <coughs> Uh, then there is this concept of nested ordering, where some languages um, uh, sort their collection based on two, three, or four levels uh, of information. Like in Arabic, some Arabic dictionaries um, utilize root words. In most of the Arabic words, the root word is of three letters, and then uh, some are four and five letters as well. And then all the derived uh, words from that, those root words, uh, will be together. So they will be sorted internally, but on top level, uh, the root words will be sorted. The problem is, they apply morphological derivations. So those derived words are not guaranteed, like book, and then booking, then books, and stuff like that. The changes, the extra letters that appear to, to, to derive the, the word from the root can appear anywhere, in the beginning, in the middle, at the end, or anywhere. <coughs> So, and sometimes for the sake of uh, pronunciation, some of those letters are simplified or removed or changed to something else so, because it makes more sense to, to pronounce that way. So the root letters are actually gone from the main word, these derived words. And then in Chinese, for example, some Chinese dictionaries organize the data uh, uh, in two steps. They take buckets of radicals and inside these radicals, they sort the collections based on strokes and how many strokes are there in what order those strokes are applied. So <clears throat> having said that, um, how can we improve the accessibility? I'm coming to that point now. So the first thing we can do is there are scanned pages, put them in order. And if there are multiple volumes of the dictionary, try to combine them together, try to make sure there are no missing pages in the middle. And the page numbers here doesn't necessarily uh, uh, the same as the page number on the printed page. They are just the logical order in which the, uh, it appears in our collection. So, so let's come, uh, come back here. What it will allow is like traditional uh, dictionary style lookup. If you are looking for a term book, you will randomly open the page number 10. No, it's, I think it's, it's uh, forward, go page number 200. No, too far, come back and do like binary search style uh, lookup and then you finally reach a page. And most of the time we take these head words basically uh, for this fast lookup to navigate from the pages backward and forward. But we can do better because we have computers. What if we create index? Index of each uh, page where the first letter, your uh, first word appears. So for example, bossless, and this guy right here, and all the the word, the first words that appear on every page, just put them in order and the page numbers. Now we can do much better here in this case, and this is the crux of this this work. That was the main idea why we uh, did this. So so now if you are looking for the term book. You will, you will look for this guy, okay, it's greater than this, greater than this, greater than this, but less than board. So the book should be somewhere here in the bonnet and board. <coughs> and if the board is the first word of the page number 148, then the book is probably on 147. And it turns out, yes, it is. <coughs> but this mechanism will land you to the page. It will not guarantee that the word that you are looking for will it is actually there or not. You'll have to look for it. And where is it in the page? And looking back to the, the complexities of uh, uh, sorting, some dictionaries might not allow you to do this kind of lookup. So there is another uh, thing that we can do, which is called full indexing, where we'll have the list of all the words appeared in this dictionary. 
and the page numbers, corresponding page numbers. So there would be like multiple entries per page. Now the previous one, this parse index was a function of how many pages are there in the dictionary. And, but this index is um, a function of uh, number of words in the dictionary. Can we do any better? And it looks like yes, we can. So if we crowdsource the, uh, the effort of locating these words, if someone looked for the term book and they said, hey, yeah, I found it here, and if they can place a marker there, next time someone looking for the term book, we can say, hey, it's on page number 147, it's right here. So we can just point out, and basically page numbers were there, and over the time we can just build this coordinate index on it. <coughs> so, so, so here is the, the whole procedure, how we make the dictionaries uh, from one uh, step to the other. We take the scanned copies and take, uh, put them in the proper order, and then we have two choices from there, either go for the sparse index, if dictionary allows that, or go for the initial uh, indexing as full index. Or, and then use feedback, use our feedback to come from sparse index to full index and from there to location index where you can actually point out like where, where the term exists. But can we do better? Uh, what if we can make these pages interactive and people can annotate those, uh, uh, those words right there, adding relevant images and uh, definitions and um, uh, links of resources, uh, recorded voice or something. So while we are on this scanned page, we can still interact with this. <coughs> and then the next step, can we ask user for the feedback to digitize this thing so that over time these scanned pages are actually available in the digital form. And the way is allow users to highlight certain regions and then they can have like uh, presented with a form where they can actually describe all these things in the fielded style and that will allow us to make fielded searching like uh, parts of speech, transcript, and, uh, uh, the term itself, and definitions, examples, and whatever we, we want in that. So all these what ifs that uh, we've gone through, uh, we built this thing called Dictionary Explorer to accommodate all these things, all these features. <coughs> which is a multilingual, multidictionary uh, 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 application. It allows searching and exploration that solves uh, uh, some problems. And it um, allows annotation and digitization. Users can contribute to it. The source code will be available. It's not just yet on this um, uh, repository. So this is how it looks. So if you remember the, the book reader uh, of Internet Archive, uh, this is the different, uh, diff different interface that I built. And here it allows you to search for a term or just unroll these tree style things like B and then BO and then BOO and you find the term, you click here and it lands you to the page, the proper location and there are multiple dictionaries right here. So at the same time when you are looking for the term book, if this page was in focus, you are here. If you go to another dictionary or third dictionary, they will all be aligned with their appropriate page numbers where, where the, uh, uh, the term definition exists. And, and the same interface for Urdu dictionaries and uh, why I have it here is basically, uh, so it is now right to left and all these controls are right to left because the language demands that uh, uh, there are annotations and uh, <coughs> user contributions in here. So uh, having that, that application in place, we thought, hey, let's, uh, let's now uh, 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 try some real data, <laughs> not just the fake uh, stuff. Uh, and we took a simple English to Urdu dictionary from the archived collection. And since it was English to Urdu, and Urdu uh, definitions were not in Urdu, they were written in Roman. So the, the dictionary had a transcript available. We fetched that text file, parsed it, and it took about 10 minutes or less to make that dictionary searchable. Uh, it was jumping from page to page. So that was good. So we got this confidence and we thought, let's go for the bigger uh, uh, option. So we, we picked a, an old uh, monolingual Urdu dictionary, <coughs> which has like 2,500 pages in it, and we decided to get a sparse index on that. So a couple of people uh, 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 <coughs> sit together and it took about an hour or so um, and 
basically, if, if a single person had to do that, it would have taken like two hours. Then uh, we took another old dictionary that was not easy to do sparse indexing, so we, saw, we thought we'd do full indexing on that. That had 3,200 pages in it, so we crowdsourced the, the task of ta indexing all these words that appear in there, and it took us about 60 days. Um, and there were like 75,000 words and phrases and uh, <coughs> idioms. 13 contributors contributed to that thing, and it took us about 60 days to, to get everything done. Uh, and I will uh, mention uh, 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 <coughs> Urdu Web Digital Library team and Aisha Aziz for this contribution. They, they did a tremendous job of um, uh, indexing that, that dictionary. So, <coughs> so if you remember that, tree-like structure that allows us to explore the, uh, the terms without entering using their keyboard, basically. So I thought, how, how effectively we can build that? And one way was to take the letters of an alphabet and unroll every time, like to produce all the combinations. If they unroll B, generate B, A, B, 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 C, up to B, Z, and, and uh, so on and so forth. As they unroll, just generate more, all the possibilities. So it turns out it will be uh, um, an exponential graph of how many possibilities are there. But we don't have to worry about it because we don't have to know uh, what are the words in the language. But the other problem with this is like it will generate a lot of uh, paths that have that lead to no words. And this is a log scale thing. That's why this this line is a straight basically. So if we take an, a real data set, and I took like 143,000 uh, word list, basically, and generated uh, uh, possible indexes on that. So, so the path was like this, and it was converging. So, so we thought, what if we organize all these letters in, in, in one level uh, 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 letter list basically A, B, C, D, and, and you unroll A, all the words that start with A appear there basically. So that's not very uh, um, uh, useful because some letters will have more than 2,000 words in it, and there'll be some that will have like 40, 50 letters. So we thought, what if we introduce two level of depth there? So we got like, uh, there'll be some outliers that will have 5,000 words in a single tree, uh, tree node but there will be some that will have just one. Go deeper, and we found this three uh, level depth is, is kind of optimal, and if you remember the head words that are printed in the, on the pages of English dictionary, they were also three, uh, three letter words. So this is like uh, uh, proven uh, for a long time, and, and I've seen that appearing in Urdu and Hindi and other languages as well. They use three letter uh, head words. But if you go for four letter prefixes of five or six, we get like a lot of them just contain just, just a single word, and you just unroll and you get just word, one word. Not very uh, useful. And these guys right here, they are always like, uh, these are actually common prefixes like pre built. It's so something that starts with P or pre or un or uh, uh, something, something very common. Uh, they all combine together and they. They come together basically. So with that, I reach to the end where I will uh, wrap up. So we identified four issues uh, in exploring dictionaries. Uh, dictionaries that have OCR support available. Often they have returned too many results. Uh, fielded searching is not available. Dictionaries that don't have uh, OCR support. Uh, the problem is lack of OCR support doesn't allow searching them. Um, and it's not uh, very easy to access dictionaries when you don't have writing support available on your computer. So, and we talked about collation challenges, um, the, the sorting order and all. Um, and then we described this ability, uh, accessibility order from order pages to sparse index to full index and uh, location index, also annotation and digitization. Uh, we implemented a multilingual, multi-dictionary explorer. We evaluated efforts and prefix uh, evaluation uh, uh, required to uh, uh, build these uh, indexes. And in future, uh, we have an idea for elastic indexing. 
where we can leverage a index of one dictionary and utilize it for the other um, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, notion that two dictionaries that have similar sort order, uh, no matter how many pages they have, they will have similar uh, distribution of words. So, and this, this elastic index can be corrected in places and that will uh, 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 recursively fix the, uh, uh, improve the accuracy. And we can measure that. And we can do automatic region estimate, like if this letter, appear, uh, this word appears here and the next word appear here, probably this is the region where the definition existed. Uh, <coughs> And the source code will be available on this Urdu web slash uh, dictionary explorer uh, on GitHub. So I will leave this slide here while uh, uh, I'm open for the questions. Thank you. So we have a minute or two maybe for questions. Yes. So for the different languages, like English and the uh, language Google, Urdu? Yes. So the, the indexing method, you said that the same or different? Yes. The, uh, so Can you repeat the question, please, sir? Yes. So she is asking the indexing analysis that I did. Uh, I illustrated using English uh, data set, and I was talking mostly about Urdu. Uh, so will they match? And I did that analysis on Urdu uh, uh, word list as well. It does match the similar pattern. Languages are like that. The words are distributed. Some letters will have more words, and some will have not many words. Uh, but I made some of the things available here so that more uh, in English, so that mo uh, most of the people can understand it. If I have every slide in, in Arabic or Persian, not very uh, many people can understand. So that was the motivation behind why I had so many things in English. But yeah, they do match. They do match. Further questions? Yes. Please. Are you saying your work uh, included the uh, language translation? No. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, she's asking if my work uh, includes language translations. Oh, okay. No, that's not. That's not the thing. But it is a dictionary that can help in translation. Yes. Maybe a follow-up to this, can it help for uh, language detection? Uh, language detection? The, yeah, you mentioned the annotation layer. Could that be used? So, so basically, all that annotation and digitization thing was crowdsourced right. stuff, where people over time can overlay that information. And when you have that, so uh, when you have that information, what you can do is basically, uh, now we have a textual representation of that. And we also know the region where it belongs to. So in, in searches, we can actually crop out that image portion and uh, display that search result. And that can be helpful in, 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 in many ways, like you are putting you know, inline translation in tooltips or something. The image can show up that has more credibility than, than type words. Yeah. Yeah. Another question, Dubai? Yes. Um, I wanted to disagree with your characterization of Two book where the two you characterized as a prefix. I think that in English that's not described as a prefix. But I wanted to offer uh, an example in collation in English, which isn't found in dictionaries but found in other places. And that is uh, in the um, the white pages uh, when they actually printed them. Uh, they used to. Uh, my mother's name last name is McDuff, M A C D U F, and they would group the, all the, all the M A Cs together. And it's similar for, for example, uh, O'Brien, O'Reilly. Uh, those would all be clustered. Mm -hmm. And so that is an example of where it's it's a prefix and it has a strange collation. Right. So 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 I said some dictionaries follow one way and some follow the other. And uh, most of the Arabic dictionaries I have seen recently, they have like complete alphabetical order, especially those that were built recently because they were using computers and computers make it sorting that way easier. But in early days, they were trying to keep those things together uh, on the root words because there is like meaning uh, um, cloud basically. So when you are on a word, all these variations will have 
similar uh, root meaning with, the, with differences, and, and that makes a lot of sense when you look up a dictionary. You don't usually just imprint a uh, case, basically. You just don't look that word. You look a couple of words before and after to just get the feeling, which is not uh, uh, going to work where you have like this absolute R ring. So some old dictionaries use that, that pattern. Um, and and, and it, it differs, and that's why this works sometimes. We really need to have like, you know, uh, per dictionary uh, custom sorter that, that tells like, hey, how exactly this, this dictionary sorts the words uh, from the same language they, uh, they might be for. Yeah. All right, for the sake of time, let's uh, stop here. So we're just going to be around if you have any further questions. So I'll please take them offline. And uh, please join me in thanking Sohud again. Thank you.